We're here today with Matt Berry, and Matt tests ice screws and everything else here in the Quality Assurance Lab, or QA Lab, and he's probably the world's expert on how ice screws break. Today I'd like to just kind of go through some of the different uh, considerations when using aluminum versus a steel ice screw, and some of the pros and cons of each of these types of screws. Placing these in the field ideally between a 10 and 15 degree positive angle flush to the ice. The ice you're putting this screw into is crucial. So really spending the time to clear away any kind of onion skins or dry ice or sun-baked ice and getting into that nice blue consistent homogenous ice to put your screw placement into is utmost priority. This will be loaded in a, what we call a radial direction, in a fall direction and ultimately the ice around the screw placement will get uh, enough stress on it where it eventually creates a cone and exposes about three to five centimeters of the screw body, which ultimately will cause this to yield over in the fall direction and ultimately failing at the screw body. This is the most common way that these would fail. So the, the surface ice starts failing first, this little piece right here. Correct. Okay, so it starts, starts bending, ice is breaking, goes down, and then the actual like body of this rips off? Oh yeah. The yeah. hanger doesn't rip off. No, not typically. The, the, the barrel is really doing nothing. Everything, the holding power is in, this, in the threads. That's correct. That makes sense. So you're just lining it up more with the load. Yep, and you're also trying to reduce the leverage uh, on the ice to uh, essentially reduce stresses in the ice so that it will cone out at a higher load. We want to choose the right screw length for, you know, for the ice that we have in front of us and, uh, and always go to the hanger when possible. Longer screws are not necessarily stronger. You no, no, hang on. Choose... No, no, I get guests all the time. Longer screws are stronger, dude. No. These are stronger. That Why aren't they incorrect. stronger? They're all rated to 10 kilonewtons, so right. 10 centimeters all the way up to here are rated to 10 kilonewtons, so That's they're all extremely strong and capable of holding a lead fall. The difference being is that when you do have that scenario where the ice cones out around a 10, you're not left with enough thread engagement right. in the ice, and this will rip out of the ice rather than failing at the body or the hanger. This ice screw has to hold 10 of you yep. to reach the standard. And yep. even these short little ones here, these still hold 10 mats. 10. You know, so you be a good kid, and we can hold 10 mats off of here. And yep. I, that's, I didn't know that actually. That's really. Pretty strong. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. You said something to me when you were up in Canada last year, like, these are a lot weaker. Uh huh. And I was like, hang on, these are the latest, greatest thing. You know, I've like signed up to the program, light is right. Yeah. And you kind of ruined my day. So, why, why are these awesome, more expensive aluminum <laughs> screws weaker than the steel screws? There's a couple reasons why you have material differences. Uh, the aluminum in its T6 state is more brittle than the uh, stainless, which is pretty ductile. But essentially, you'll start to hear and see the ice fracturing around the screw placement. Said it's going to cone out about three to five centimeters. So you'll see that the screw is now unsupported and exposed for about three to five centimeters, close to where these threads are going to be beginning on the screw. So you still have all the holding force of the threads, which means it's not going to rip out of the ice mm -hmm. uh, immediately. But now you are left with this big lever arm, which is going to have a huge bending moment on the screw body. And on a steel screw, you'll start to see the steel actually buckle and yield all the way over and ultimately fail catastrophically. Whereas the aluminum screw, all of the same situation is going to occur, except that it won't yield nearly as much. This will blow out the tube and buckle um, quite rapidly. So when you go, when you go ice climbing, and you do do a lot of ice climbing, do you bring all aluminum or do I you? I bring a mixture of everything, to yeah. be honest with you. I love, there's a lot of advantages for the ultralights, other than the fact that they're just light. You can rebore nicely with the larger diameter yeah. screw, get good thread engagement, but good holding power. But, you know, there's also some cons. If you ever have to deal with some of these more inconsistent ice placements, I always lean towards the steel screw because I know that is inherently stronger and more robust. I mean, it's getting pretty technical, but that's really interesting. And I've gone that way after our conversation as well. All of a sudden, the steel screws are back in style. Yeah. 
So a BD has some of the larger diameter aluminum screws. So when I'm using screws in the field in old holes, yeah. this gets technical. But in general, go for an aluminum screw because you know it's a larger diameter. Very true, yeah. When we're reboring holes, the most important thing is that we're getting good thread engagement and, and cutting new threads into that ice. How has your thinking kind of evolved over the years as a result of your work? I mean, I think it makes me safer because I know what to look for and the limitations of the different types of screws that we offer on the market. But as a whole, like it really builds confidence that these screws are extremely strong and very trustworthy when placed in, in good ice by a user that has the knowledge to use them appropriately. If I were to summarize what you're just going to say, like the, the key things are good ice. Yes. For the whole length of the screw, all the way from the hanger to the tip, or else if, if it starts breaking on the surface, it's bad, obviously it starts breaking back here. Mm -hmm. And then tip slightly high, call that a positive angle. Yep. And then the appropriate length screw for the ice. You don't have half the screw hanging out or something. Absolutely correct. Get good ice screws, 10 mats. Yes. I like it. Thanks, man. Good.